Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be looking at a puzzle called Silent Fletching, today by Oddly Even. Now, fletching is a word which means to make arrows. Um, and I guess that's explaining why we've got some arrows in the grid. And also, I think these are German whisper lines. Um, and apparently, this is a beautiful puzzle. We've had three recommendations for this just in the last couple of days. So it should be something very special indeed. Um, do I have any news for you? Uh, well, we had a, I tweeted this earlier. It's been getting quite a lot of traction. Uh, a friend of mine uh, sent this to me on WhatsApp this morning, and it tickled me pink, so I thought I'd share it. Uh, so, have you noticed the best Formula One drivers are named after Scottish towns? I'll let you read out the names and figure out what's going on, but let's just say that one in the bottom right amused me greatly, uh, and I hope some of you will find a smile from that one. Um, other than that, I need to say very well done to Matt Boss and to Alfredo Gliotti, um, because both of you have correctly solved the Star Wars Puzzle Hunt, uh, which is now available for our patrons over on Patreon. That is some mean solving. We only released that on the 1st of January. So to get through all those puzzles in just a couple of days is very impressive indeed. Um, and a reminder for those of you who either haven't started the hunt or who are stuck on the hunt, there is a great channel on, our our, on Discord at the moment. It's called Patreon Chat. Uh, if you go there, you'll basically find a lot of people discussing what's going on and you'll even find Peter C. Hayward there. Um, Peter C. Hayward wrote The Hunt, so a good person to get some tips from. Um, now, all that said and done, let's get on with silent fletching. Oh, silent because it's with German whispers. Right, now I understand. Gosh, Simon, speed up. Uh, here are the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle and adjacent digits on a green line must differ by at least five. So just for those who are new to variant Sudoku, how do arrows work? Let's imagine that this square was a two and that square was a six. Two plus six equals eight. So you have to put eight in the circle of the arrow. Um, and German whispers, basically they work. Let's make this square a two. Now this square must be at least five different from two. I think we had this rule set yesterday as well. So two plus five is seven. So this has to either be seven, eight or nine. Obviously we can't go down from two or this will have to be a negative number. And we haven't yet got to those levels of madness in Sudoku. Please don't think about it. Any constructors watching this, the software can't handle it. I don't want negative numbers in my Sudoku, at least not at the moment. Um, anyway, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm going to get rid of the example too because that will confuse me. Um, now, what are we seeing here? I'm seeing this sort of circle. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm seeing three arrows that have length three. Now, normally a length three arrow is very interesting. This one's interesting and this one's interesting. Unfortunately, this one you wouldn't invite round to a dinner party because it's let itself down. And by flicking off here into box three, all of its potency disappears because basically we can now repeat a digit on this arrow. So we could have a one here and a one and a two there and make this circle a four. Whereas this one must be at least six because if we go one, two, three on the arrow, that will be one plus two plus three equals six. And the same is true of that one. Um, that's a short stubby arrow. So it probably we need the whispers, I think, uh, to get us started here. Although I am sort of wondering about set again. It wasn't, it wasn't yesterday's puzzle, uh, German whispers involving set. I, I lose track of the days and the Sudokus. They all merge into one, but I think it might have been. Let's have a look at this is, this is obviously the longest whisper line. Now, what do we know about whisper lines? We know the two facts which are so important. Fact one, you can never put a five on a whisper line. And that's because if you try to do it, the next digit you place on the whisper line will be a problem because it either has to be a zero or less or a 10 or higher, both of which are impossible because of course the digits have to be five apart. Now the, the corollary of that or an implication of that is that because you can't put a five on a whisper line, each digit is either a low digit, like a one, two, three, or four, or a high digit, a six, seven, eight, or nine. 
and the, and the line must oscillate. So a key thing, uh, when I say oscillate, I mean if this is a low digit, that will have to be a high digit, and then the next digit will have to be low again, etc. Um, so the key thing that you normally have to work out with whisper lines is, you know, what is the parity? Where where are the high digits on the line? Are they in, whoopsie, <laughs> are they in those four cells or are they in those? Oh, one, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, okay, it's a length seven line, so that makes sense. Or those three cells. Um, so let me just have a look at this. We seem to have quite a lot going on in terms of row one, row five, row nine. Column one, maybe. Certainly, ah, yeah, the wheel. This is it, this is it, this is it. Yes, okay. Okay, what we need to do here, I think, is to make use of the wheel. And what I'm, so what I'm thinking in terms of the wheel is, if I can put these digits into a different set of, to this digit, I can cancel them out and I can see how I can do that. Yeah, here we go. Right, so we're gonna highlight, we're gonna be doing Scrabble tiles, I think, again today. So I'm gonna highlight column five and column nine in orange and I'm going to highlight row five and row nine in blue and what am I why am I doing this well let's do some visualization so I want to imagine that I've got nine scrabble tiles nine orange scrabble tiles uh, representing column five and on each scrabble tile I'll just write I know this is a set of the digits one to nine. I don't know, um, I don't know obviously what the order of those digits is, but it's a complete column of the Sudoku and every Sudoku column contains the digits one to nine. So I can write the numbers one to nine on each of my Scrabble tiles and put them in an orange bag. And then I can do exactly the same for column nine and add those into my orange bag. So I've got 18 Scrabble tiles in my orange bag um, and I've got Two of them will have a digit one on them, two of them will have a digit two, two will have a digit three, etc., etc. Two of them will have a digit nine, and that's how the 18 are accounted for. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with a with 18 blue Scrabble tiles and put those in a blue bag. So I've got an orange bag and a blue bag. But look, this is where I think this gets rather beautiful. This digit, whatever it is in the finished grid, let's make it a nine just for the sake of exposition. I can go and hunt in my, um, well, let's, let's establish some facts. Obviously, my Scrabble tiles at the start of this exercise are completely the same because they both contain 18 Scrabble tiles with two sets of the digits one to nine on them. Whatever is in this cell, I can go and find that in my orange bag and find it in my blue bag and throw it away from both bags, I'll be left with 17 Scrabble tiles in both bags and I'll still have exactly the same contents because I've thrown away the same thing from both bags. So any cell that's now colored in two colors, I can do that for. If I could find, I could just, I can just delete or throw away both those, both the Scrabble tiles or each of the Scrabble tiles from both bags. And it's still true at this point, although I've now got only 14 uh, tiles left in each bag that they still are identical. They still contain the identical sets of digits. Now, this is what I wanted to do though. Look, look what's going on if we consider these two squares and this square. And I want to change slightly what we've been talking about. So at the moment I've been trying to ensure that the tiles in both bags are the same and they still are at this point. Now if we sum the tiles in, in the orange bag and sum the tiles in the blue bag, obviously those sums must be the same because we've got the same tiles in both bags. But think about the nature of an arrow. An arrow is telling us that those two cells there add up to the same as that cell. So if I was to remove these two cells, whatever they are from the blue bag, and this cell, whatever that is from the orange bag, delete them, 
it's still true to say that the sum of the orange digits and the sum of the blue digits is identical. Albeit that I've now got a different number of Scrabble tiles in my blue bag, because I took two out of that, to my orange bag. And I can keep doing this. Look, this one and this one. So I find those in my Scrabble bags, remove two from orange, one from blue. I remove two from blue, one from orange down here. This one from the blue bag, take out those two corresponding orange blag tiles. And now we get to this point. So at this point, interestingly, we do have um, we do have the same number of tiles, but we don't know that they're the, exactly the same digits. What we do know at this point is that these eight orange Scrabble tiles add up to exactly the same as the orange blue tiles, and that must be interesting because these are on Wisp these are both on whispers lines, and these are both on arrows. So. Um, okay, so the minimum we could put, if we made this a six, seven pair, the orange cells would add up to two times six plus seven, which is 26. Now, that won't work. That won't work because if we think about the nature of a whispers line, we know that yeah, this is, this is really lovely. It's a bit like what we did yesterday again, though. Let's think about how this line actually oscillates. What does that mean? Well, it means it's going to go either high, low, high, low, or low, high, low, high. In other words, this whispers line has exactly two digits from the high set of digits in it. So the high set are the six, sevens, eights, and nines of this world and two digits from the low set, which are the ones, twos, threes, and fours of this world. So if I absolutely minimize the contents of this whispers line, I could put a one and a two and a six and a seven on it. And one plus two plus six plus seven is 16. So if I can put 16 on that minimum and 16 on this minimum, that's 32. So the orange cells have to add up to at least 32. And that's nearly good, but not quite good enough because we could make this an eight, nine pair. And if it's an eight, nine pair, then the orange cells would add up to two times 17, which is 34. So we've got freedoms and freedoms in, Sudo freedoms in life are great, but freedoms in Sudoku are absolutely awful. We've got two degrees of freedom. We don't have to minimize this, or we don't have to maximize these. Um, what did I say this was? It's six, 16, wasn't it? So 32 is the minimum value of blue. Right, so we can get rid of six from the sums here, because if we, even if we go six plus nine, uh, or six here, nine here, then we're doubling 15 to get the total of all of these cells and hopefully that's clear to everyone the reason I'm doubling them is obviously if this is a six and this is a nine because the arrow also adds to six I can view this circle plus arrow combination as two times six and I can view this circle plus arrow combination as two times nine in other words to get the total of all of those cells I simply add these two and multiply them by two um, but you can see that six plus nine times two is only thirty Whereas we said that this was a minimum of 32. So we can get rid of six from here. Um, 32. So what we can't have is seven and eight here. So if there is a seven in the circle, it must be with nine. So, uh, yeah, okay. So we definitely have a nine in one of those two cells now. And it's either either we're heading towards if this was nine seven then we would know the contents of these lines they both have to be one two six seven we'd have to think about how they were ordered actually we would have to think about how they're ordered as well because there are two diff digits on german whispers lines that are very difficult 
and that's the sixes and the fours. And you can think about that. If we put a six here, what happens? Well, both of these squares now have to be five away from six. So they both have to be a one and that's broken. So we do have to be a bit careful. Oh, I see. We're going to get a sort of X swing on sixes. Um, in other words, we could have a six here and a six here. And then that would work or a six here and a six here. So we can, we can just rearrange the lines. Um, so how do we finish this off then? Finish this off. <laughs> I've not got a digit in the grid. I've got two cells pencil marked and some colors placed. Oh dearie me. Um, what do we do next? We've got I've eliminated the circle. The circle, I mean, doesn't look very interesting in and of itself. There it must be something to do with. Is there a reason you can't, hang on, let me just think about this. There might be a reason you can't go six, if we go six here, if we go six here, that has to be a one. Now we have to go to a high digit, which we're saying could be a seven, and then that could be a two, and that would work. And then here we could go, we could just reverse that six, one, seven, two. Nothing wrong with that, I don't think that is, 16 plus 16, so that is 32. Ah, yeah, oh, that's, ah, oh, ha ha, got it. Right, that is absolutely gorgeous. This is, this, this is world-class setting. Oddly even, take a bow. This is world-class setting. Um, Look at row one. Look at row one. Look at this whispers line here. There are four cells on this whispers line. So what do we know about those four cells in terms of high-low parity? Two of them must be high. So two of them must be from the digits six, seven, eight, and nine. In other words, combined with our circles, these two digits, wherever they live on this line, have to form a quadruple in the row. But that means there is a six in one of those cells. Now, at first blush, we might not say we knew where that six is, but we've just talked about sixes down here. You have to put a six next to a one on a whispers line. So you can never put it in the middle of a whispers line where the two digits on either side see each other. So the, so the six simply cannot go in any of those cells. And you get a, so our first digit is a six in row one. And now we know the parity of the line. So now we know that this is high, this is high, this is high and this is high. So we need colors for that. Um, we'll use purple. And we'll make the low digits yellow. So we now know this is a one. We know that this is a seven, eight or nine. And we know that that can't be a four. Uh, this can't be a four because if we put four into this square, both of those squares have to be nine to be five away. And I'm just, I'm now having a bit of a panic because what I did want to do was to put sixes into an X-wing shape down here on these two German whispers lines. And I can't do that anymore. Uh, let me just think about this for a second. Does, is this what gets rid of my degrees of freedom between the, the sum of these and the sum of these? I really hope it is because that is, if, that, if that's right, that is staggeringly beautiful to me. I now can't, yeah, well, it's certainly true to say you can't put six, one, seven, two onto both of the blue lines because the six always is at the end of a line and I can't put two sixes there. So I'd need to put a six at one, one of those where I can't now put it. So if I can't put six on one of these lines at all, 
then the high digits on that line will have to be a minimum of 7 plus 8, which loses up my 2 degrees of freedom QED. That is absolutely beautiful. So now, because we can only put one six in the, uh, uh, well, in fact, that's a good way of putting it. In those eight cells, there can be a maximum of one six now, because if there is a six, it must go in, uh, on an end point, And these two endpoints have been removed and you can't put two sixes there because of Sudoku. Because I can only put one six now, the lowest high digits I can put on those eight cells are two seven and then seven eight on the other one. And I combine those with ones and twos and I get to 34. And 34 is rather beautiful because that is the absolute maximum I can make those two circles add up to. So those two circles are now eight, nine. This square here is a seven. Seven can't be next to three because it's not five away from it. So that's a two. That's a low digit that can't be a four because it would require double nine around it. So that's a three. And those must be an eight, eight, nine pair. And that, this is absolutely brilliant. Oh, this is absolutely brilliant. I can, I'm already, I'm at a point where I can't w w wait to read the comments on this puzzle. Because this is the sort of thing that I think is just, it, it's not, what's the right way? It's not brutally hard to, once you see it. But once you do see it, you just, you just feel like everything works and like, you know, maths works and everything is in order and has a special place. Um, now, having said all that, now one of these must be a six now. That's what we definitely know. I don't know which one. Um, uh, hang on a minute. Let me think about this. Uh, so let's actually, I'm just, I don't know which one of these is a six. I'm just going to try and fill one of them in. So let's say this is six. It, that line will have to go six, one, seven, two. Now the other line has to have a seven and then an eight on it and a one and a two on it. So, So is there a problem with the seven going, see, I, I can see the seven can't be in a central position because of the sevens that must exist in these two positions. And if this was six, one, seven, two, that logic would still prevail over this central domino. So the seven is definitely at the end. So it could go seven, I think the ones and the twos are sort of ambiguous as well. Oh, I suppose the, no, this will fix that. So if this was seven, we'd have to go two, eight, one. But if this was seven, we'd have to go two, eight, one. And this of course could, could be absolutely the other way around in the sense that this string of digits could be here and the 6172 could be there. That's very annoying. Um, so maybe what I should do is to put these options in down here. So let's do that 6172. And now I'm just going to copy these up here so that we've actually got a full and complete sort of mapping of the options for these two whispers lines. Right. Um, okay, maybe row one. What do we need to complete row one? We need threes, fours and fives into those squares. And that's quite a high digit. Ah, yeah. This circle now, which I maligned earlier for being boring at dinner parties, has now upped its game. It's read a few books and it's trying to become more witty because now, even if I put one and two into this domino here, I get to add a three to that. So this also acquires a little bit of, um, 
I suppose, a little bit of grandeur and weight. It's got to be at least equal to six now. Um, ah, got it. Right, okay. And now look at box two. Because what what you can't put on any of these arrow lines now is a particularly high digit. In fact, that's really interesting. So is this a 789 triple? I think so. I was actually thinking about 7 in the context of these two squares, but these squares here can't contain 8s or 9s either. So the only places for the digits 7, 8 and 9 in box 2 are these three cells. So these squares uh, have to form a triple and the 7 in that triple is in this domino and that fixes 7 out of here and that tells us the parity of course. Right, so now I'm going to colour these lines of something other than blue because now I know those and these must be yellows because I know that these two cells have to be low digits. So we can take 8 out of those two squares. So these have to be high digits. Uh, which means they, they acquire the level of purple. And now we shall... Can I do this? <laughs> do I know which way around these go? Um, probably. I've got a one, two pair here. Looking at that square, that's got to be at least a three. What's this square going to be? Oh, hang on, I've got, I have got stuff going on in this column. Right, ah, right, I've got a 1, 4, 5 triple. That's quite interesting, given that has to be at least a 3. That definitely can't be a 1. Ah, yeah, good, this is good. This square can't be a 1, because I've got a 1 in the column. So the minimum value of this square is 2, the minimum value of this square is 3, and 2 plus 3 equals 5. So we can't possibly make this a 4. So that's a 5, that's a 3, that's a 2. Um, okay, so we can get rid of those squares. This 2, ah, this, ah, yeah, this 2 sees that square. So that becomes 1, that becomes 2, that becomes 1, that becomes 2. Now I can't put 6 next to 2 on this whispers line, so that's a 7 and an, ah, so this is the higher whispers line. That's a 9, that's an 8 by Sudoku. And this is the low whispers line, so that must be 6 and 7, and that's 4 and that's 1, and the puzzle is now filling itself in. That's an 8-9 pair. Oh, it's an 8-9 pair with an 8 here, so that's 8, that's 9. This square here is no longer 8. Um, 1, 2, so 3, 4s, 5s and 6s. It has to be a three in one of those squares. One, two. Ah, okay, and we can go for now. We might be able to get into our wheel. Because look at this square. It can't be eight or nine, and yet its arrow cells can't have a one or a two on them. So that must be a three, four pair adding up to seven. Whoopsie, that's the only way it will work. So the rest of row 9 now needs to be 5, 8, and 9 in some order. That square. Can that really be 5? No, because, ah, here's something nice. Um, if this is a 5, think about these 5 squares in column 5. What's the minimum we could make these 5 cells add up to? Well, the triangular number for 5 is 15. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15. And that means that these two circles must add up to at least 15. And therefore, this can never be a 5, or that would have to be a 10. Um, so these, uh, But these could be the same digit, so that we can't say that these add up to 17. They could be double 8 or double 9. Um, right. Let's have a look at this little cell, because you can see I've got three purples in box four already. So the only way this can be a high digit on its whisper is if it's a six, 
But if it's a 6, that has to be a 1, and that won't work, because we've already got a 1 in column 4. So this square must be a low digit, which means it's a 3 or a 4, which means this square is a high digit, which means, and it has to be 5 away, so it's an 8 or a 9, and that's doing two things. That's doing two things, actually. Firstly, it's giving us a 7, 8, 9 triple in column 4, which is quite interesting, but more interesting, it's giving me an 8, 9 pair look in box 8, so that square becomes a 5. Now, now we've got some sort of skyscraper going on in on 8s and 9s. Can we do something with this? Probably. just have to work out what it is. Um, 8, 9, 8, 9. Oh, come on, Simon. How do we do this? This column, we need 3s, 4s, and 5s. Ah, yeah, okay. That square's a naked single because it cannot be 4 or 5. So that's a 3. Those are a 4, 5 pair. Is the three helping us somehow? Probably is the answer to that. Um, two, five, two. Yeah, okay, we should do some Sudoku. I know I tend to resist it in these Sudoku puzzles, but sometimes it's forced upon us. And here we've got a two, five pair and a two, five pair. So those squares are a two, five pair which means that those squares are a 1, 6 pair. And that means these two squares are a 7 and a something, a 4. We've got to get this adding up to 8 or 9. Yeah, okay, one, one way of thinking about this is to say, how, how is it possible there's no 1? on this arrow. If there's no 1 on this arrow, the minimum it adds up to is 4 plus 6, which is too many. So there must be a 1 on the arrow, which means it must be a 1, 7 arrow going with a 4, 6 into the other cells. That's no longer a 6. Oh, right, this is beautiful. Again, simple but beautiful. 1 here. That's a 3 cell arrow that can't have a 1 on it. So that must be 2, 3, 4 adding up to no, oh, adding up to 9, not adding up to a border. 9, 8, 9, 8, uh, 7, 8, um, and that's a 4, 5 pair. So that can't be a 4. This column still needs a 6 and an 8, and there's an 8 here. So the 8 must go into the circle. This must be a 6. This must be a 3-5 pair, because we can't use um, either 1-7 or 2-6. And you can see the 5 here means that's got to be the 3. That's got to be a 5. That's a 5 by Sudoku. It sees a 3 and a 4 in the column. Oh, hang on. Oh, I was about to worry I had a deadly pattern, but it's. I think it's going to be fixed by this arrow. This arrow has a, has a role to play in determining row 1, column 7, and that will determine how these four cells here need to be arranged in the finished grid. Thank goodness. That can't be an 8 anymore. Um, this 3 makes this square a 2. So now on this side, we must... Oh, look, yeah, we've got a 1 and a 2 and a 3 here. So 3 and 4 go in the grid. And yeah, okay, they add up to 3. We can't, so we can't make this a 6 to get to 9. So that must be a 7, which means that square's a 4, that square's a 3, that square's a 4, that square's a 3. 3 lives in one of those two squares in column uh, yeah, in column 9, that's quite interesting for the... Oh, no, it's not. I was about to say that's going to allow me to determine the 8 arrow, but I'm not sure it does, actually. What about those squares? 4 and... Oh, 4 and 9. Okay, that we can do that. That's 4. That's 9. And that does determine the nature of this 8 arrow, because it can no longer have a 3 on it. If it's got a 3 on it, it would have to have a 1 and a 4 as well, and the 4 here prevents that. So the 3 must move down, which... By maths gives us a 6 here, that's a 9, 
that forces, no it doesn't, it's the wrong way around to force anything. Oh, but the three is useful. That's four, that's four, that's five. This is nine. Okay, it's still going quite well. Can I get this two, five? I can, five and two go in the grid. One and eight into those cells, don't know how to do that yet. Um, what do we need in this box? We need threes, fives and sixes. So three goes here, five goes here, six goes here. What do we need in this box? Four, five, six, and nine. So that's a five, six pair, and that's a four, nine pair, which we can do. And now nine is in one of those three. Can't go on an arrow, can't go in column eight, so nine goes here. Nine, eight, so it's probably gonna be this whispers line that finishes the puzzle off, I think. That's a one by Sudoku two and five into those squares. These squares here are sixes and eights. Okay, well that, that's quite interesting in that it tells us this square is high. So we now know this square is low, and what can it be? It can't be three, four, or two. So that's a one, that's a one, that's a two, that's a two, that's a five, that's a five, that's a six, that's a six, that's a seven, that's a six, that's an eight, that's an eight, that's a one, and we still need two and seven into those squares, which I think resolves that way. And we click tick, and that is a sensationally good puzzle. It is, yeah, the, it's just a perfect, a perfect puzzle for cracking the cryptic, because it's, it's got, elegance, beauty, it hides its secrets a little bit, but when you find the secret, it makes you gasp. And that is everything you could ask for in a Sudoku puzzle. Absolutely love that, oddly even. Um, and thanks so much to those of you who sent that in to us, because that is a stunner. And it's an, uh, oddly even is a name I'm gonna be looking out for in the future. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to the comments on that one. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.